Okay, so getting a C compiler for Windows. First, we're going to get a suitable terminal. Now, Windows comes with two terminals or uh, console applications. One is the command prompt. Now, I have my command prompt down here uh, pinned to my toolbar. Okay, and the other one is PowerShell. Okay, so we're not going to use those in this class uh, because... Um, I want, when I type something uh, in class, I want the Mac folks and the Linux folks and the Windows folks to, to be typing in the same commands. So we're going to be using um, Git Bash, okay? And the way that you install Git Bash is you pull up a browser and you search for uh, Git for Windows, Okay. So once you find uh, Git for Windows, make sure you go to Git for Windows. Then download and install. Okay, so once you uh, install that, let's just kind of go through some of the installation options. Okay. Now I already have it installed. Okay, so uh, when I go through the options, it may or may not let me continue to do it. But I just want to kind of show you. So... Mostly what you want to do is, you know, once you've got the install going, you can close down that. Just go ahead and ex uh, start the install process. So it's removing. That's good. It's going to remove the previous version of Git. Okay, I'll go through that. You may not uh, see this part of the installation process, but that's okay. Now, uh, completing the git setup wizard, I'm going to say launch git bash. Okay, so once you've got it installed, then you should see something like this. Now, uh, don't need that. All right. So I have uh, already set this up on my machine, right? So I'm, uh, I have my SSH key, so I just need to enter it in. To get past this piece, but here's your... Uh, your git bash window. So this is a bash shell. And oh, by the way, I need to go back to the Mac uh, in a second uh, and show you one other thing. But uh, here, it already gives you git, right? So if you type git, so you've got that. We, we might do a little bit of repository operations in this boot camp, okay? Now we're going to install another uh, product. Um, this is kind of based on MSYS, right? So we're going to install MSYS. So we're going to open up another browser and search for... Uh, actually, the way that you get here is go to the syllabus, okay? Uh, warrenworks.com. Go to courses and then go to C Programming Bootcamp. All right. And then scroll down. And in the first session for Windows, you're looking for MSYS2. So follow the link to MSYS2. And you can go directly there with MSYS2.org. Okay. And then scroll down and you'll see the installation. So download the installer for MSYS2 x86-64 exe. Okay. So I already have it installed, but it goes, it's very easy to install. Uh, once you download the installer, it will ask you where you want to install it. I just say, I recommend just the default location, which is C colon backslash M664. Click next. And then when uh, it installs everything in short order, click finish. And then once it's done, it will open up a, a window similar to the Git bash window. Okay. Uh, next, uh, you want to... Scroll down a little bit farther on this MSYS page. And we're going to install the GCC compiler with this command right here. It says pacman, that's a package manager, dash S, ming uh, W, W64, right? So that's what we want to install. So come over to the right of that little text box and click the copy icon. Okay, so now that should be copied to your clipboard. 
Now you can minimize your uh, window and then open up uh, your if your if your mean sys if your msys2 shortcut is still uh, it or terminal is still open. All right. Let me make this bigger so we so you can see the text options. And I'm going to select text and uh, I'm just going to go to like 18. That should be should be big enough. Apply. Okay. Apply. Apply. Save. Okay. So here is your uh, terminal. This is also a bash terminal. And then just paste. But I here's how you do it. Don't control V. Just right click on your mouse and click paste. Now here's a gotcha. When you copy that, it copies this dollar sign also, which you don't want. So use an arrow key and go all the way to the left. Okay. And execute that command. I'm going to execute it. Everything's already installed on my machine, but I'm going to see what happens. All right. So I'm just going to uh, install. It should say everything's up to date, right? On my here in this example. Uh, okay. So let's see here. Yes. Okay. So it's doing it again. This is what you will see. You will see this uh, installation proceed. And once it's finished, then uh, what you want to do is close this window, okay? Because we're going to go set an environment variable. Now, in order for, because right now, if you opened up either git bash, right? If you typed uh, gcc, um, well, I can find it, right? So that was kind of a bad example because I've got the environment variable set, right? But generally, if you type GCC, it'll say command not found. Okay, so the way that you resolve that is come down to your toolbar. There should be a folder. Just go ahead and open up that folder and then come up to your this PC and right click on this PC, click properties, and then this will give you about uh, window, your, your settings window, right? And then you're looking for, and it could be uh, different depending on your version of uh, Windows. If you're uh, on Windows 10, it's probably over here in the right-hand corner. Or it's, it's underneath on Windows 11 in this area somewhere. But you're looking for Advanced System Settings. So click on Advanced System Settings. And then this will pull up the System Settings dialog. Then click on Environment Variables. Okay, now that you're there... We want to open up your hard drive and then go to your M6, msys64 installation directory. Open that up and then come down to the UCRT64. That's the, um, that's the package that was installed with Pac-Man. So double click that folder. Again, that's the C colon backslash msys64 backslash UCRT64 bin. And then in here is your C and your C++ compilers. Okay. So then uh, click up here in your, in your, um, in your path bar and, and then right click and copy that path. And then in your, then you can close that window. And then in the path, you want to select up here in your user environment variables. You want to select path, uh, edit. So I already have that path there, but uh, you would just, if, if you don't have this path there, which you won't initially, then click new, all right, and then paste in that path, okay? That's how you set your environment variable. At this point, then what you would do is I'm just going to delete it, right, because I already have it. But you paste it in and then hit OK, OK, and then OK. And then you can close this window and uh, you can close this one here. Then open up Git Bash or MSYS, either of these two, right? 
and then type GCC and you should see uh, an error because you haven't put any input files in. Okay. Now, uh, that mean, if you see that, then that means that path is work is works, right? And you can find your way to the, to the, uh, C compiler and, and, uh, that will allow you to compile. Now we need to install visual studio code again. Well, uh, let's see here. You may have not have watched since you're not a Mac, <laughs> since you don't have a Mac, you may have not watched the Mac section, right? So pull up your browser and search for uh, visual studio code. Okay, and then just, uh, I go to the website, all right, and then download for Windows 10, right? You can download it, it runs, see, the reason I like this, it runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux, right? All right, so just go ahead and download it. And then uh, if you open up, you can go ahead and open up the uh, file. You can close that window. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do that again. So let's go to the downloads. Users, Swodog, that's mine, downloads. So here's Visual Studio Code. Now I already have it installed, right? So I'm running this installer and it says, okay, uh, do you want to run this file? I'll say, yeah, go ahead and run it. So you get to the licensing agreement, uh, accept the licensing agreement next. Now, uh, if it gives you a choice, well, first off, at, you want to add a desktop icon like I have over here. And then for, for uh, Windows, this is important. These are already checked, so leave them checked. Add open with code action to Windows Explorer. Add open the code uh, in the directory. Register code as an editor for supported files. Add path. So this is already going to add the uh, path to where you install it. And then click next. Okay, and then you can click install. I already have it installed. Uh, so I'm just going to cancel. But anyway, click install. When you're done installing... You should have a uh, Visual Studio Code icon on your desktop. Open up your Visual Studio Code. Okay. Now, if this is the first time, uh, don't show. I don't want to take a survey. Okay. You won't see any of this stuff, right? So let me um, just get out of here. All right. So if you, uh, if you have... Um, when you download the latest version, you shouldn't have any updates. But if you see like a two, like numbers over here in a blue circle, that means there's extension updates. And it means that you have to shut down Visual Studio Code and relaunch it. And so uh, we'll relaunch it. And then that should remove, okay, those, those blue notifications. Now, again, for C programming, uh, you want to search for C. And we're going to install these three extensions. So the um, any any extension you're looking for the blue gear with a check mark at from Microsoft, and then click install for the IntelliSense. So I initially had this set up for Python programming, but now I'm installing the C programming extensions. And then themes, I like, uh, and then it'll ask you which theme. So I'll do 2017 dark. That's your personal preference, right? You can play around with that. And then install the C extension, excuse me, extension pack. And that's it. That's all you need, right? Because you already have the, you, you have the compiler. And this is just going to allow you to work with C in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so once everything's installed, um, then uh, you are just about ready to go. I believe that is it. Um, you've got your git bash. Now, uh, I'll talk about terminal commands here in a bit, right? So, uh, as I said earlier, a lot of folks don't have experience with uh, terminal operations, but th these this is a bash terminal, so it you know, you can type in Linux commands in it, right? Unix commands. And I'll talk more about that in another video. 
but you are ready. You've got GCC, okay? And you've got a code editor. So you're all set to start uh, working on C programs. Thank <music> you.